Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Byron and we are in the Hive. Let's talk to this harlot here. You see a tired looking woman dressed in a tight leather bodice and leggings. The odor of cheap perfume surrounds her like a cloud and her face is covered with a mask of crude makeup. She smiles as she sees you. Why don't you stay and chat with me a bit, love? Greetings. The woman looks coyly at you. Now you look to be a blood who's lost something, may I? I can help you find it, Cutter. She smiles slightly. Oh. What a good fortune. We probably lost what we were looking for back at your kip, miss. I'm not missing anything, but I did have some questions. Well, <laughs> let's go with the obvious one first. I'm missing your journal. Of course she doesn't know about your journal. She's a total stranger, but would she know about your journal? She seems confused. What's she about? Forget the journal. Maybe you can help me find what I'm really missing. Her tone becomes businesslike. I love. Now there's the matter of a finder's fee. I see how much. Some coppers for a glance at what you're missing and ten coppers to actually find what you're missing. I'm done. I think we've found what you're looking for. Come along then. Okay, we follow her. Apparently we didn't move, but okay. That's it then, Cutter. I had some questions for you. Well, now that I can concentrate. Oh. Apparently um, we did something. Oh, the game didn't show it. Oh well. The woman frowns. I'm not a tout, she frowns, then rubs two fingers together. Unless you've got some jink to pay for my time. I can pay you. How much? Ten coppers. Other questions of a deeper chant will cost you more. Sounds fair. Here's ten comments. We have money. I then. She slips the jink into her palm where it promptly vanishes. Now, there were some things I wanted to know. Ask your questions, love. Uh, I'm looking for someone named Farrod. Farrod? Now that's one of the greater darks, love. If you be wanting to know about that, but that'll be thrice the coppers of a normal asking. Mm, fair enough, here's 30 comments. She gives your coins a once over, then shrugs and pockets them. What you be wanting to know about Farrod? Um, at that price, anything you can tell me. She shrugs. Chandis, he's a collector boss. Has a whole bunch of bloods in his shadow. Where can I, can I find him? 250 XP. No one knows for that sure, but if I were to suggest a place, love, I'd say Rag Picker Square. Rag Picker Square? I, a big old heap of rags and trash, three blocks due west of the mortuary. All the collectors take their kip there. Chances are Farrod's got his kip there too. What's a collector? You know, them sorts that pick up deaders for jink. Sorry, lord. They gather bodies? Why? Course they don't got the looks to do what I do. Oh, I see. I had some other questions. Can you tell me about the city? Her eyes narrow suspiciously. The city? What about it? What is it? What sigil you mean? She shrugs, looks around. It's the city beneath your feet and rising to the sides of you. She smiles. Makes visitors stomach gallop. It does. Yeah, actually it does. If it's a ring, I'm really sure that your stomach doesn't take kindly to that. Where exactly is Sigil? Send off the planes to hear it hold. She snorts, if you believe that wash. Why is it wash? She smirks. Well now, love, according to the grey beards and scholars and governors and all of the rest of them rattling their brain boxes, they says the planes go on forever. She taps her head. Who's to say where the center is? Hmm, I had some other questions. Can you tell me uh, what's of interest around here? She puts her hand on her hips and pouts. Depends on your interests, Cutter. I'm looking for a good time. I already made you an offer, love, and it's not an unfair price. Don't know or nowhere else you might be enjoying the delights you'd have with me. What else is around here of interest? I'm looking for work. She laughs. You're asking me? What are you thinking? Of becoming one of the sisterhood, are you? <laughs> what? You're thinking of becoming one of the sisterhood, are you? She nearly buckles over in laughter. The screeching is similar to her drunken harpies. Eventually the gales of slaughter, of slaughter, not slaughter, of slaughter subsides. And she takes a deep breath. You're, you're a rich man, you're a... 
Okay, so I guess that's all we get here. I have some other questions. What can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? She spits and makes a half circle around her heart. That bladed witch, all high and mighty, mistress of all this city, floating inside and she kills anyone in her shadow. She tans the city, I, she hisses, and leaves the living things in it, in it to rot. Okay, she doesn't like her. I'm looking for a journal. No idea where you'd find such a thing, love. You might look elsewhere. She smiles sug suggestively. I'd know some places uh, where you might start. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yellas, uh, when you get tired of losing things and need to find some things, love, come see me. Morte says something to achieve. Can you spot me some jink? It is uh, been a long time, it has. Well, I suppose it can't hurt. The woman breaks in. It's twice the cost for the Mimi or any other degenerate. Uh, don't sweat it, Morty. From the looks of her, I'm probably saving you from dying twice. May a pox shrivel your innards. You have the stink and fashion sense of a gathered, of a goat herd. And you're twice as ugly. Um, new taunts, alright! Oh, he's learning new taunts. Morty stares, hypnotized, as the v harlot lets loose a stream of obscenities. At the end of the verbal avalanche, Morty is silent for a moment and turns to you. Wow, Chief. Got a few more taunts for the old arsenal. He looks back to the harlot who is catching her breath. I'm also in love. Okay. Did anything update? No. We, st we have the Angier quest from the last video. A man named Angier has signed a dead contract with the Dustman, which will allow them to reanimate Angier's body after his death for use as an undead servant. Angier regrets having signed it sorely, which has caused both him and his wife great anguish. I've offered to go speak with the Dustman who dealt with Angier, Mortai Gravesend. We should be within the gathering dust bar. When I obtain the contract, I'll take it back to Angier and his wife and give it to them. All right, who are you? An angry hive dweller, and you another harlot. You see a man in old and tattered clothes. As you approach him, he makes a detour to avoid you and keeps walking. Greetings. The man ignores you and begins to walk faster. Sir? He turns, glancing briefly to the right and left of you as if looking to see if you have any friends with you. He draws a dagger. Best leave me be or you'll be wearing the steel between your ribs. Calm down, I just had some questions. He scoffs. I'm sure you do and I have no answers for the likes of you. Piss off. Farewell then. Hey, we're being watched, Chief. Who's just that? look natural. Uh, being the sandman. Casual. You see a heavy set man with sharp features and a pained expression. Despite his huge frame, however, he has an effeminate effeminate look about him and unlike the other residents you've seen he looks to have bathed recently. As you approach he looks up hopefully and calls out in a high voice. Craddock, good sir. What? Eh, his hopeful expression dies as he studies your face. A thousand apologies good sir if I have given offense. He gives a slight bow. I'm called Ben the Sander, third child of Dai Ben the Sander. I'm one of the many runners in the employ of the House of Sanders. No apologies necessary, Ben. What do you want? A thousand apologies for troubling you with such a trivial matter, but I seek Craddock, an overseer in the hive. Ben looks like he is in pain, but alas, he eludes me. He looks at you hopefully again. Could it be you have heard of such a man? I'm sorry, I haven't. Ben gives a deep sigh. I am bound to deliver a message to him, and yet fortune has chosen not to favor me. I could help you if I come across the man, I could pass along your message. Ben's face lights up like a lantern. Oh, fortunate day for Ben at the House of Sanders. Any assistance you could provide would be most welcome. If you can find this credit and pass along the message, I shall see to it you are paid for your troubles. Alright, what's the message? Ben recites the message almost like a mantra. 
the shipmen must be incursed by the third day or there will be a penalty. Ben frowns. I'm told that Craddock will know of the shipment to which the message pertains. Okay, if I see Craddock, I'll pass along the message. Is there anything you can tell me about him before I go that might help me find him? He is said to be a giant of a man, stern of features. That he is an overseer in one of the hive marketplaces. Alas, I know little else than that, good sir. You don't happen to have a picture of him? I see. That's enough to go on for now. Ben bows. Thank you, sir. Should fortune favor you, and you are able to bear the message to Craddock, be so kind as to return and tell me of it. I will see to it your efforts are rewarded. Very well. Oh, well Updated done. my journal. So, we have another quest, apparently. Find Craddock for Bane the Sender. I agreed to deliver a message for a man named Bane the Sender. Bane said the person I need to deliver the message to was named Craddock, and is said to be an overseer in a marketplace somewhere in the hive. The only description Ben could give me of Craddock was that he was a giant, stern-looking man. I keep my eye out for him. If I find Craddock, I will deliver the message and then go back to tell Ben. Yeah, I agree to deliver the message of Craddock if I should see him. Ben said he was an overseer in the marketplace somewhere at the hive. Yeah, since everybody has a name, we should be able to pull this one off. What do we have here? There's a dust map. You see a somber pale faced dust woman. I think we already talked to him, is that correct? Yeah. And that probably is the gathering dust bar. What is that? Just a hive bar. And another harlot. Come on, form up. A uh, gathering dust bar. Exactly. Let's go in. We have no Yochi. And we have a zombie worker, another dustman. Zir the skeptic. Another dustman. Can't read it. Dustman, dustman. These gates are made of a featureless black metal. There doesn't appear to be any way to open them. Another zombie worker. All right. Zombie bodyguard. We have Amoric. Um, what was the guy's name? Um, Multi Gravesand. Who are you? What's in here? Nothing. I'm gone. This looks like a mirror, but there is no reflection of the bar in it. Maybe it's a TV set. Old copper eyes, dustman. Where the fuck is that guy? Awaiting death. Where's this grave set? There. This tiny, wizened man is dwarfed by his huge dustman robes. They look as if they were chosen to cloak his small stature. Although he looks to be in his late 90s, this man is extremely energetic. He fidgets continuously and his eyes dart around the bar like birds. Greetings! Oh, that was the wrong button. I said greetings. The man's eyes gleam as he takes your measure and he gives a slight nod in greeting. Hail and well met traveller, you look like one who is just getting their sigil legs about them. He trails off. Pardon me, have we met before? Your face seems familiar somehow. Possibly. Are you certain it was me? Hmm, maybe I was mistaken. Mortai shakes his head. Well, no matter, no matter. How is that Mortai Gravesand may help you? Do you seek, he clucks his tongue as he speaks, the contract perhaps? Mortai Gravesand, are you the dustman who signed the contract with Angier? Mortai frowns, he looks puzzled. Mayhap? He thinks for a moment. I do not recall the name, however. I'd like to settle that contract. Mortai looks very. I'm afraid that's impossible. The contract is signed, settled, and binding. Uh, let's not be forceful here. Let's be sneaky and intelligent and wise. The contract is tearing the man's life apart. It is causing him distress. It is possible that he may not even be able to approach the true death. 
with such emotions, emotions churning in his mind. What I choose it over for a moment. It looks like you've negotiated him into a corner. I cannot. It is a matter of law, my friend. Besides, the burden lies upon the signer to overcome his own feelings in order to reach the true death. I cannot. So what you're saying is that you'll deny him the true death for the sake of a piece of parchment? Morty sighs and holds up his hands as if to placate you. Look, it's not how you're making it out to be. <laughs> I think I have him there. <laughs> you obviously hold the philosophy of the dustman in contempt to damn a man's soul over a piece of paper. Do other members of your faction know of your conduct in this regard? If not, they soon will. Mortai glares at you for a moment, opens his mouth, closes it, then opens it. By the nine hells, wait here. He drops his voice to whisper, and keep your bone, botch, bone box latched. He gives an angry scowl and stomps off. We wait. A few seconds later he returns. He is holding a dusty piece of parchment which he gives to you. Here. He sniffs disdainfully. All for a man's peace of mind. Now be gone and nettle me with your preachings no longer. I will leave for now. Farewell, Mortai. So, looks like we got Angers' contract. This crisp, crisp parchment has a musty smell about it, like it has been stored in an attic for too long. From what you can make out from the tiny cramped writing, this document seems to be a contract between two parties. The Dustman faction and a man named Angier. In exchange for 30 copper pieces, Angier signed away the rights to his corpse to the Dustman, presumably so that they can use him as a worker in the mortuary. Oh, and a word. I am well aware that uh, choosing options in this game uh, makes you change your alignment at least a little bit each time. I'm not trying to min max uh, something or to. Done. You know, create a special alignment here. I will just fit, take the answer that I see, think that are fitting, and we will see what kind of alignment we will get out of this. I know, you know, maybe I will not. Hey, uh, why, why can't I go to that? Okay, I can. I know that if you have a certain alignment, you can use certain items and have certain uh, benefits, gain certain benefits from that. I will not play like that. This would, you know, cause too much trouble. I would have to, you know, plan out the way I want to play this. And more like meta play the game. I don't want to meta play the game. I want to play the game. So, I choose the answers that I think suit me. And we will see what that does for us here. I really hope that it, that doesn't, uh, you know, um, put me into a corner where I can't win the game. But it is, of course, possible. We shall see. Anger. Yeah, this man looks haunted. His eyes are half lidded as if he has had trouble sleeping, and his hair is long and unkempt. His beard is flecked with bits of dead skin and old bits of food. He doesn't seem to notice you as you approach. Greetings. The man glances up at the sound of your voice and his slack expression vanishes. He looks like someone has lit it looks like someone has lit two fires in his eyes. What be your business barging into me house? His eyes narrow and his teeth clench. Get, or I'll send you back to whatever grave you crawled from. Um, show him his dustman contract. As you pull out the contract, the blood drains out of Anger's face. For a moment, he seems at a loss for words, but then his temper quickly resurfaces. Where did you get that? By the powers. You best tell me. Tear up the contract. Updated my journal. You tear up the contract and Angus's eyes follow the bits of paper as they float to the ground. With a desperate look, he shudders slightly, then straightens as if a great weight was lifted from him. Yet, he looks like he's about to thank you, then stops and stares at you suspiciously. Nothing's for free, not in the hive cutter. Consider this free, and expect a lot of rules in the hive to change while I'm around. Angier's angry expression crumbles. 
He looks tired of fighting his good fortune. I... I must have prayed had the right powers this past half-month, he sighs. You have made me thanks, Katra, for whatever that's worth. It's worth a great deal to me. Take care, Inga. Let's see what his wife has to say. Angia's wife smiles as she sees you. Well met, good sir. How can I help you? I was wondering if I could rest here. Oh, I, I can actually. Not that I wanted to, but hey, whatever. I didn't want to rest. Oh, but it's good to know that I can rest here. Done. Um... Where is the auto save? That's really fortunate that we get an auto save when we enter something. It's good to know, but I don't need to rest right now. Updated my journal. I just wanted to come and check and to come check and see how you were doing. Farewell. Okay. Let's see whether we can actually get some answers from them now. You see Angia, he looks much better than before. Some color has returned to his face and his eyes have lost their haunted look. As you approach him again he turns slowly to face you and he snorts. Hmm. If it isn't the hive's own saint of sorts, sorts like myself, he grunts, what can I do for you? I had some questions. Angia nuts, ask your questions. I'm looking for a man named Farad. Do you know where I can find him? Angia nuts, I that name been known to me and not a fond name is it either. What can you tell me about him? He frowns. He's one of them collectors and one with a long shadow. Has quite a few boys at his beck and call. He may not be lord of the realm, but he's not a smart one to tangle with on his turf. Do you know where I can find Updated him? Updated my journal. I, but I wouldn't be doing you a favor telling it to you. He frown, his frown deepens. One of me kin fell into his lot a few months back and spilled some of the dark of old Farad. Tahir Tal Farad's actually got his kip buried somewhere under Ragpicker Square. To get to it, there's some kind of portal you need to jump through while carrying some junk in your hand. Where's Ragpicker Square? It's a few blocks from here. Go straight west from the mortuary gate. Keep going until you start seeing trash and rags piled up everywhere. You'd best have to walk careful there. The collectors here don't always wait for a body to die before collecting on the corpse, you hear? Okay. Um, collectors? Human vultures, jackals, hyenas, filthy burks who ain't got a shred of dignity. Most of them have their kip in Ragpicker Square. Gather the data, scuttle everything worth jink from the bodies, then sell them back to the dusties at the mortuary. Why do they do that? Dusties pay for bodies, helps them keep the streets clean when the rains aren't enough. Okay. Can I ask you why you signed? Nah, that's maybe a tricky one. I've lost a journal of mine, have you seen one? Anger frowns and shakes his head, haven't seen a th such a thing as... Haven't seen su a, thing, a thing such as that, Cutter. Okay, uh, can I ask why you signed the Dustman contract? Perhaps it's the sheer amount of riches and wealth that surrounds you that distracts you, he snorts. We have less than nothing and I need a jink. Didn't seem to matter too much at the time where it might come from and selling me body to the dust is a lot more honest than most work around here. What caused you to change your mind? It's just, he sighs, then I saw one of them zombies on the streets a half month ago. One of them zombies that worked for the Dusties, and it stabbed me in, the, in my heart. I knew I'd made a mistake. I didn't want to be any part of that after death. Ah, oh, we have all had our share of mistakes. Anger grunts, I suppose so. Oh well. What could you do? Woman. 
I'm low on supplies. Can you help me out? What does she have? You could buy... Oh, okay. could I sell stuff to you? Oh, you don't have money. Hmm. You could buy bandages and needle and threads. We don't really need that. Okay. Done. And we have a place to rest. That's nice. And, um... I tore up the dead contract that was causing anger so much misery. He seemed to shed a few years as the bits of paper fell to the floor. Anger told me where I could find Ferret. He said that Ferret got his kip buried beneath the wreck because square. He told me there was some kind of portal to the gate uh, to Ferret's hideout and that I would need to be carrying some junk in order to open this portal. Ooh, did I bring junk along? Yeah, I have junk. Awesome. Um, let's return to the Dustman Bar. All right. I hope that Morty Gravesand, whatever his name was, guy isn't too pissed with me. Let's see whether he's still on speaking terms. Done. Ah, Mortai frowns as you approach, clucking his tongue. You again. Have you come to make me surrender more contracts in the name of the Dustman faction? He frowns and sighs. Well, no matter, no matter. The past is past. He regains his old smile and nods at you. What is it I may do for you? I have some questions. Of course, of course. Mortai nods. It would be my pleasure to answer any questions you might have. I'm searching for a man named Farod. Have you seen him? Mortai frowns. He's one of the those collectors, isn't he? I know a little of him. I think Initiate Amorik mentioned him in passing. Mortai glances around. Amorik should be around here in the bar somewhere. He can usually be found in the far corner at the head table, I believe. Um, have you seen him? Uh, why is he pestering everybody about his journal? Mortai shakes his head. I know nothing about the journal he smiles. I deal with documenta documentation of a much different sort. You mean that contract you mentioned? What about it? The contract? Why? It is but a simple transaction. From the depths of his huge robe, Morte pulls forth a dusty parchment and a quill pen. I give you 50 comments in return. After death, the dustman faction may claim your remains. He smiles and claws, uh, clucks his tongue. What use will you have? for them at that point anyway. What do the dustmen do uh, with the body? Mortai holds up his hands as if he doesn't know. What does it matter? It is of no consequence when you pass on. What it matters to me? Well, if you must know, oft times nothing is done with the body. And it is we the dustmen who have wasted all that money. More fools us. Mortai gives a light smile and looks apologetic. Um, but rarely there are times when the workers in the mortuary need to be replaced and then we may have need for your body. You mean I'll be animated as a corpse and put to work in the mortuary? That doesn't sound good. Ah, but no harm is done, no pain. Mortai raises a finger as if to emphasize the point. And there is no danger. In exchange for money you can spend in this life, you merely have to give us something you will have no need of anyway once you have died. Morta taps his chest. I signed a contract myself, if you must know. I shall have no need of my body when I pass on. I'll consider it. For now I have some other questions. Can you tell me about some of the patrons here? I'm not signing that contract, sorry. Um, since I don't really know what happens uh, after death and <laughs> the nameless one and death, well, they aren't really on speaking terms. Ah, I'm not signing anything when I don't really know what are like the result of that. Um, so I will not sign that contract. <laughs> yeah, I don't know any of their names. Oh ah, well, farewell. Okay, Mortai nods as you turn to leave. Hmm, he has a strange expression on his face. Is there something wrong? 
Mortal frowns. Forgive me, I must ask again. Are you sure we haven't met before? Possibly. I do not recall you. Hmm. Mortai shakes his head. Well, no matter. Farewell, Mortai. Yes, farewell. Mortai studies you as you leave, and you hear him mutter under his breath something about that one. Okay, he apparently knows the nameless one. Uh, not that it would help us here. So there are a lot of other dusties here. We will talk to them. Oh, there. I'm gone. What's in here? That's empty. I'm gone. Let's check the containers. Rex. These bubbling tanks are dispensing their contents into wooden kegs. There's a faint smell of vinegar in the air. Okay. I'm gone. I don't seem to All get right. anything. And we will talk to the other people in the next video. So, thank you very much for watching. And see you soon. Bye.